In the last video, I've been called out by a bunch of you that I'm using an AI avatar for creating this YouTube video. I just want to give you some insights that this is not exactly an AI avatar. You can see, for example, I can take off and on and off my rings. I have five fingers. I can probably stand up. I don't know if I'm getting cut from the camera frame, but I can stand up, I can sit down, I can, you know, just adjust myself and it's not an AI, right? The thing is that it'll take me probably more time to create an AI avatar, create a script for it than just putting up a camera and shooting the video. This is like a little different setup, but I am at least for now not using an AI avatar for creating YouTube videos. Anyway, getting back to the topic of the video, I want to explore something known as open code in this where they have recently released a desktop application. Now, if you don't know about open code, open code is basically an AI coding agent, just like Claude code or Codex or a bunch of them which are available these days, but with the advantage that it's fully open sourced, number one. And second is that they also provide a free model inside it, which their own company hosts, right? So you can not only just use open code as a software, but you can also use the AI inside that. Now, traditionally, this has been only a CLI based model. So you just have to install it using one of these options. But now what you can also do is you can download a desktop app and it says that it's in beta on Mac OS, Windows and Linux. So I'm assuming there would be a bunch of bugs, but you can come here, you can download it based on your operating system. They do mention that do I need an extra AI subscription to use open code? Not necessarily because they have a free model as well, but probably because you want to use better models. You'll need an AI subscription if you want to connect to an open code to a paid provider, although you can work with local models for free. And we all know for a fact like local models, are not really that good, right? Specifically for coding. While we encourage users to use Zen, open code works with all popular providers like OpenAI, Anthropic, etc. So Zen is basically an AI gateway inside of open code, right? And this is probably their monetization model as well. So where, you, where, you, where they give you an AI gateway, like an open router or something, which allows you to connect to any specific gateway of your choice, any specific underlying model of your choice, but then, you know, charge, you are charged directly through open code. We have discussed how do you create an AI gateway in another video. I'll link it somewhere in the video here or in the description. So you'll be able to find that video as well. All right. So once you download it and you search for it, you will find open code as something like this. Let me just bring it to my second screen over here. And you'll see that it gives you the option sort of like a IDE or something. I mean, from the last time I've downloaded it automatically got updated as well. But anyway, so it, it first thing that I noticed was that the start time was not very good, right? Second is that it starts to ask for permissions a lot. So it'll start to ask for file system permissions of here and there. This is something I observed in the last run as well. Then you have these bunch of sessions which are on the left. They're not, this is not an IDE. So this is one thing to remember. This is sort of like a CLI with a GUI, right? Built only for prompting. So let's say I just open our backend project for now, right? Even though it says that it's not last modified 29 seconds ago, I don't think this is the right thing. So looking at the interface, you can see it is proper GUI, but this is not exactly like an IDE. So I can't open my code. I can't start editing things or maybe I can. I can. All right. So this looks like, no, no, I cannot. It's only read only, right? So I can open a file. I can open it in like a read only way, but I won't be able to, you know, edit the code right there and there. I can create multiple folders, multiple repositories. I can connect some provider or something, you know, and there are a lot of models that you can choose from. So let's see if I can connect Anthropic because I have like Claude Max or Pro. I'm not exactly sure. It opens this page. I will click authorize. I have the authentication code and I'll submit it here. Allow. And that's good. So now we have Anthropic models connected. And if I look into this, you will see that we have Opus, Sonnet and Haiku, which is the worst model ever <laughs> for coding. So these are here. So for Opus, I can go ahead and select this, right? Great. Now let's just do a hello world or something. Let's see how it responds. So you'll see that just like every AI application, it will create sort of like a title for the chat first using some cheap model or something. And then it'll just start to respond right? Show steps, hide steps doesn't really work. Not sure like what it's supposed to do. There's ability to create or attach images at least for now, not on any other items. And there is a terminal as well, which is available. So I don't want to update it yet. The terminals fonts at least looks a little bit weird. The command K shortcut, which is used for clearing the terminal doesn't work. And maybe this is because of the custom terminal that I have. I'm not sure if this would be 
the same for every terminal. Let's see if I can open open code inside open code. Yep, and you can open open code inside open code. And if I write hello, for example, right. So this is a custom Anthropic model that I had used, which probably have the wrong keys or whatever. So if I go and choose, let's say, hello here, great. So open code inside open code works as well inside a CLI. You obviously don't need to do that. I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but anyway, so if I exit this, I'm assuming that the terminal should automatically close, right? So, but, but that does not happen. So that's fine. This is a beta software. So we are expected to see these bunch of bugs here and there. But other than that, let's say, let's say I give it a task. Can you go through the code base and find one bug, any one bug? And of course, you know, it will be a long running task. I'm hoping <laughs> given that we have not done a lot of blunders in the code base directly. So it should be a while till it takes the time to gather the feedback. See me personally, I'm not a huge fan of these, this way of working. I would ideally want either a CLI or a terminal, which is like lightweight and you can, you know, minimize it, open a bunch of them. I mean, you can technically do these things here as well, but this is something that I've never done myself as a developer in my workflow. So that's why I'm a little hesitant on using a software like this because I don't see this as a problem, immediate problem that needed to be solved with GUI. Terminals are good enough for coding specific use cases like cloud code and even open code as a matter of fact or codex CLI. And on the UI side, if we have an editor or if we have at least the view, you might as well just, you know, go ahead and give me the ability to edit the access, edit the source code as well, whatever the AI is creating. Because over here, I have basically zero control, right? So I can't edit anything by myself. I only have to prompt it. I only have to tell the AI agent to do like whatever it's supposed to be doing, which is fair, which is how a cloud code and things like that work. But then again, like I'm never really working only with cloud code. I have always an editor which is open in place so that editor would be used for doing anything else right maybe making a small tweak maybe just checking the diff with the actual cloud code that code that cloud wrote or maybe just reviewing the code base as well so i would not be able to review the code directly from the cloud codes terminal window i'll need an editor or something to see the difference in how they are exactly doing the code so this again is i feel this is broken where this just does not work at least with anthropic models for now where i'm assuming the thought chain or the thought process is not here and basically i don't have any visible visibility as such. It also has like a bunch of build and plan modes. I'm assuming that plan mode works like cloud code where it does not actually start making changes right away. But the funny thing about build and plan mode is that these models, when you're working with smart models, which is very important in code bases like Opus 4.5 and GPT 5.2 and so on, uh, these models are smart enough that they will not do the building part if you don't ask them to do it. All right, it has come with a bug, inverted Boolean logic in Slack notification rate limiting. What it's saying is that, hey guys, when you are actually getting rate limited, you are sending a notification. Is user rate limited is true, then rate limit is exceeded, should not send the notification. If it's false, under rate limit, then should send the notification. So obviously this is not a bug. I mean, this is the expected behavior, but I would blame this on Opus 4.5. And that is why these models are not really good. I mean, you can't just give it something like this and you know expect it to do something on its own. Obviously you need to feed in more context. It needs to be context aware about the problem that you're solving, the things that you are doing. But that's fine. That's that's I would blame this more on Claude than on open code. But yeah, this is this is a neat interface if you want to have like a bunch of sessions going on, right? I'm assuming I can't have these sessions as tabs. So this is a UI that I would probably prefer that if I can just have these bunch of tabs over here and then I can just quickly cycle through all of them like which agent is doing what work. I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to do. Is it just supposed to have like a, you know, just a file system of some sorts available so I can just open a bunch of these files. But I would probably want that there are a bunch of sessions that are available here and I can just go ahead and start to tell these sessions that hey, do this, hey, do that and so on and so forth. And ideally, if possible, possible, I'd probably want to have like an editor here as well. I mean, again, like I just start gravitating towards an IDE because that is an ideal experience in my opinion for building code base, specifically if you're a developer, because you want to tinker around, you want to change contents, you want to make sure that, you know, if there is just one line change or maybe a, some part of the logic that needs to be changed, you need to do that. And if you are entering the GUI world, you might as well just give us that. But anyway, this is a good effort in general for people who are wipe coders, people who are just building software with prompting and they don't care a lot about editors and stuff and stuff. But I would still prefer if I'm a developer, I'll still prefer with the combination of cloud code with open code, like 
for example, like I mentioned in the last video that you can keep a set of two AI tools like a cursor or a Cloud Code or a cursor or a Gemini CLI, a cursor or a Codex or a VS Code GitHub Copilot and a Codex. Any combination is fine, but just keep two of them where one of them is an IDE and the second one is like a pure CLI tool or something like that, which allows you to create or move fast in this AI world. So that's all for this video. I will leave all the links in the description. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps. And again, this is not an AI avatar. So I'll keep creating such content and hopefully I will see you in the next video very soon.